it's your crazy fangirl shy we hope you guys are having an amazing day so today we're jumping in our first review of 2022 now you guys must be thinking, shy me, you usually jump into these reviews as soon as you've seen the movie, um, and especially because, as you guys know, Batman is one of my favourite characters in any superhero sentence, literally. Batman is something I've grown up with since I was little. It's literally my favourite thing. And yeah, you guys must be wondering, why did it take so long for you to sit down and talk about it? <laughs> but honestly, this film made me sit and think, and in a good way, because... It had so much depth to it, there were so many incredible themes, and just... Oh, we're gonna dive into it all today, guys. Matt Reeves' Batman Steps Out of the Shadows is a very unique representation of the character, including a massive character study of Batman, and how through Batman we find out more about Bruce Wayne and where his mind is currently. Going through his early days as a vigilante and finding the right way to ensure vengeance is given to those who deserve it. However, I will start off by saying that this film is not for everyone. If you are expecting a fast-paced uh, blockbuster action brawl movie, this isn't it. This is a very slow burn character study of Batman and Bruce Wayne and the other characters who are from the Batman universe who are in this movie as well. It is a true crime detective noir film uh, in, in all the right ways, um, filled with a dark ambience that hasn't been seen for a while for our Batman, and also has such dark, dripping, horrifying, and em exciting emotional themes, and at times is actually really funny, um, in the best ways possible. It honestly is a movie that I have very little to floor with, um, so yeah, let's just deep dive into this film, guys, because... Whew, there's got to be a lot to talk about. Matt Reeves has said that the comics that influenced this film was The Long Halloween as well as Year 2 Batman. Um, and I think bits of Year 1 Batman. Not much because in this film we are also dropped in in the middle of him being Batman. Um, but he's still working out how to ensure that vengeance and how in the right way it can be given. So we're going to put aside the story for a second and we're going to talk about the incredible craftsmanship that was in this film. Starting off with the incredible writing from Matt Reeves and Peter Craig. Whew, guys, the, the writing in this film and the dialogue was just so well done. Like, I'm going to be saying that a lot and even just other words that just describe how amazing this film is because honestly... It, it felt like it was ripped from comic book panels. It it really felt uh, like the like everything that was being said, especially from Batman, even Bruce Wayne and other characters, felt like it was ripped off the comics. And I absolutely was drawn into every single moment of this film with every character moment, every dialogue was just so well written, so beautifully paced. And I'm not even going to lie. There were things that could have been shaved off or could have been removed from the film, but they were so minor that it was just looked over. Like, I, I, I don't have, like, big, big problems with this film. I also have to say that Matt Reeves and Peter Craig's character study into the Batman was so oh, meticulously done and beautifully written because... We, we look through the eyes of Batman a lot in this film. We see him in his sort of like, in his like, um, comfort place as Batman. But it's to the point of an obsession. It's ugly. It's not good. And the only reason he becomes Bruce Wayne a lot of the time is to benefit the Batman. And that just shows how bad this obsession is that Bruce Wayne has to be the Batman. Um, but we are going to delve into that a little bit later. But I just wanted to say like the writing on Batman in this movie. And also, I have to praise the writing for Selina Kyle as well. Um, her story was absolutely beautiful. It was an emotional journey for her. Um, and it showed the compassionate side to the Catwoman. And we don't see that very often. We see that... We're starting to see it a little bit more in a lot of adaptions nowadays, but not all the time. We haven't seen that all the time. So I'm really glad that we were able to have that in this film. Honestly, it just felt like such... It, it felt like a very artsy Batman film. <laughs> it was just so alive and just... It's so much colour and really not only Matt Reeves, but Greg Fraser really understood what Gotham was. Together, I think, with their skills, they were really able to create this Gotham that was alive. But also, it just showed like how 
ugly it was and how, in all honesty, it was a, a city thriving from crime. And just, you see that. It's living in the streets. It's grungy. It's dark. But also it has this these bright neon colours that are just so beautiful in contrast to the ugliness of what lives within the shadows. Just, oh, it's so good. <laughs> Now, Greg Fraser, <laughs> um, uh, honestly, represent, because I, I was guessing he was Australian just because of the last name, but he's from Melbourne! But he's worked on such incredible projects. He's worked on Rogue One, he's worked on The Mandalorian, he's worked on Lion, um, and now this. And and also Dune, actually. Sorry, I forgot. I completely forgot. He's been nominated for that. Um, yeah, he he's worked on so many cool projects. And he worked on this. And again, he understood... I'm going to be a TikTok girl for a second and be like, he understood the assignment. <laughs> because he did. He understood every like facet of what Gotham makes Gotham. And it seems like he really did the work and made the city alive into its own character. Um, that also comes hand in hand with the writing. But it made it feel like a living, breathing city. And just this place you do not want to go and visit or have a holiday in. It Every scene had its moment and the colours represented something in each scene and just... it, it uh, mm. Especially, I will say this, because we are jumping from scene to scene, but in the very end, in the third act, when uh, Batman falls into the water in the final part, people will know if they've also, again, I, I always forget to say this. I put this in my title, but again, this is a spoiler review, so if you don't want to be here, shoo-shoo, please, because I'm going to bring up a lot of spoilers. Um, but in the final third act, um, Batman falls from the ceiling. He rises up from the water. It's almost a very religious, like, sort of, like, symbolism there. But he rises up from the water, um, becoming a beacon of hope and just walking through the water, leading all these people out into safety and just that... Like, and also moving out of that red light, which in so many um, movies and even just in the colour scheme of it, it means anger, it means rage, it means revenge. And he's moving away out of that light and just, it's it's beautiful. Like, it's, it's like there's so much representation there. Just, mm, like, every scene was just uh, just a, 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 a painting. Just, it was, it was beautiful. <laughs> now, the music... Who Michael Giacchino? Holy shit, dude! Like, the, but what? Like, it honestly. And this is, I mean, you guys know how much I love Hans Zimmer and how much his music has influenced me. But holy crap, Michael Giacchino! Like, it the this this soundtrack understood its characters, understood the moments, and even just I've been obsessed with the first like song on the soundtrack which is I think it's something to do with Halloween that's the one can't fight city Halloween guys like that it it's the again I'm going to talk about the intro of the movie but that music that comes in it swells slowly slowly and just it's horrifying it creates that 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 fear in you of what Batman is to these criminals and how much they fear the Batman and that's it. Batman is supposed to be feared. He literally looks like a demon from hell. That's some of the descriptions that we've had in the comics. Um, depending on which one you read. But that's the description. People call him a demon, a freak, a weirdo. And it's because he actually does look like a, a demon. Um, and every character had a beautiful soundtrack for themselves. Like, obviously, Batman, Selina, um, the Riddler, um, Penguin, and just every- everyone had, like, a unique sound to them. Well, I love the Batman. The Batman theme is incredible, um, because it's a mixture of, like, Bruce Wayne's story and then mixes into the Batman and just, oh, but also, I love Selina's just- it's such, like, like, almost 60s piano jazz a little bit. It's sensual, it's sexy and beautiful and just gentle, like, feminine. And I love that. And then the Riddler, we have this very, like, horroristic, um, like, humming of a... It sounds like a, a girl who's a little girl and that's scary and I don't like horror. The soundtrack was amazing. And so, leading me to talk about the beginning of the film, the first, like, five, ten minutes... Holy crap, dude, because we start off, also, with the mayor's, the mayor's office, the death. 
Dude, like, that was like, oh, <laughs> like, that's the moment you realize shit's going down. And then we get this introduction, and it's very reminiscent of the long Halloween. Um, and then we get Bruce Wayne's narrative and just him reading from his journal. Oh, I love that. And then leading into this incredible lead up into the Batman coming into the night and all these criminals shitting their pants because holy shit, the bat signal's on. It means Batman's on duty and you're going to get your ass kicked if you're out here. And just, it was just so good. And just, it's that, it literally, that's just glued to my brain because it's just, it already shows you it doesn't even give you too much exposition it doesn't give you too much it's just such a great introduction and then it's just silent and all you have is this growing music and just oh Michael Giacchino you are an, a genius with this listen to it and you will understand what I mean just very reminiscent of old horror movies just, uh, and then we have Greg Fraser um, with his incredible cinematography coming in and showing every nook and corner in a very artistic style and just framing every shot and Matt Reeves of course with the writing and the direction best collaboration in a comic book film and I hope that if there are sequels for the Batman that these three gentlemen come back because it worked so well and just it's a combination for I swear it I'm not even lying I really hope this happens that it is Oscar nominated now we're gonna move away from that because I can literally talk about how beautiful this movie is and every aspect as it is but we're gonna talk about the cast but I am gonna say this was one of the biggest worries I had uh, because there were so many different characters in this and I was thinking how are we going to be able to tell a story that is a is a fulfilling for majority of the characters like are we going to be able to fulfill a lot of the story arcs again the writing was fantastic for all these characters they were all able to breathe and have their moment and just it's just so good <laughs> it's so good <laughs> now I have to say like even though he had such a small role Andy Serkis stood out as Alfred he seems like a very troubled man he obviously has experience from the war and we can definitely see that's affected him in terms of his body um but he really stood out for me because immediately especially in the first like 20 minutes um when he is there um he is this old mentor to batman but also he's trying to be the father figure that bruce never had also the secret that he's holding on about the the wayne family um but also he's encouraging Bruce to take on that mantle of being a Wayne. Um, and that's something else we're going to discuss a little later when we talk about the incredible Robert Pattinson. But he is trying to push him to be Bruce Wayne. Um, because in all honesty, the, it, this isn't the Bruce Wayne that we're normally used to. But I will get again into that a little later. Um, continuing with Alfred, we see him really try and help him even with all the, the the sort of like the the tense relationship that he and Bruce have he helps him as much as he can and it's so beautiful it's lovely to see that relationship between them this like comradeship the scene in the hospital was so beautiful because we see it and because we don't see this often we saw this a little bit in Christian Bale's Batman a little bit in the Dark Knight Rises um but not a lot throughout the films like obviously Alfred owning up to the fact that he knows that he can't be the mentor or even the father figure that Bruce needs because it's a very you know unique circumstance and he was saying like it broke my heart that he was saying, like, I know how much you needed love, you needed a father, you needed a, a, a proper mentor who could teach you how to be a man, and just opens up about, like, like talking about how much respect he has for the Waynes, um, and also why the secret that they kept, even though it's controversial to Bruce, Alfred gives Bruce another perspective to look at the situation from. And from there, it, it's very understandable, but also because it unravels and it's not the entire truth um, that Bruce has been given by a certain Falcone. So John Totoro as, uh, I I'm always going to say it wrong, Carmen Falcone. Um, I think people say Falcone in different versions, but I, I'm saying Falcone. Um, 
he also was standing out a lot um especially in ways that i didn't think he would um we never saw him in the trailers we i don't think so i don't think we saw him in the trailers i didn't watch all of them because again i don't want to see all the spoilers um but um we didn't see him in many of the spoilers we saw him in very like brief like captures obviously from the paparazzis when he when they were filming in london um but overall i really loved his addition to the film um and i love how he stood out not because he was a loud gangster um he was like this he was this scary figure but he was very like quiet um soft and just not gentle because that's definitely not what he is um but he was very intelligent in the way that he um could talk to people he could read people and then from that he could address them and talk to them about certain things and i love that especially when we see him talking to bruce and then we see him like trying to sort of get into his mind and saying like you know your parents got caught up with the wrong people they called me to help and oh my god and then it it turns out that he was the one who pulled the Waynes into the into further corruption but just the way he was like trying to like go to Bruce and just coaxing him like you know like he they only did it for the best uh like to look after the mother and stuff and it's like dude I know something's not right and Bruce in all honesty, he's a, still a grieving young man um, at the loss of his parents. It's obviously like every single day something he lives with. And also a little bit that guilt um, eating at him a little bit. Um, but also just shocked that his parents aren't sort of the perfect parents that he thought them to be with this huge legacy of being a Wayne. So Falcone really did take advantage of Bruce in that moment and I love the way that he did it. Furthermore into John's performance as Falcone, he really just stood out for the cold demeanor that he could have at times. Like he was very gentle and stuff like especially with the whole Annika um situation, especially the phone call and even the Selena situation at the very end of the film just very gentle warm and like you know like he's coaxing the answers out he's being gentle he's like I won't hurt you you're gonna be okay nothing's gonna happen and then just like a switch flicks and that's that's the most horrifying thing and that's just he played that role so so well Colin Farrell as Oswald Cobblepot now or as we know the penguin now this is not the penguin that we're very familiar with um we obviously have had live action penguins and we have had nolan north play the penguin in the arkham series um and and also in different animated versions we have him but it's not the penguin that we're familiar with like he's honestly he's just having a good time he's just like hey sweetheart to like just he, he was a character and a half. I feel like Colin had, like, a f- so much fun playing the Penguin. It's not so much as a deep dive for Penguin, but more of an introduction, because obviously we do have the Penguin series coming, I think, later in a cu- in the next few years, or the next few months. Um, but um, we have this sort of, like, dive, like, a little bit, like a, t- like, toe-dipping dive into who the Penguin is a little bit, like, his, like, a- incredible personality. It- Colin was hilarious, especially when that moment like when he he solved the riddle for batman and jim gordon um i cannot speak spanish and i do not want to butcher it and offend people so but if you have watched the movie you will know what i'm talking about it's the rat situation um and i love that and he was just like over and over again just trying to correct them like how dumb are you the way he was just waddling when like he was tied up i loved it like these little things like they're not too over the top but you can't help but laugh and just that's that that was the comedy parts that i really with this it's just the right amount to sort of lighten the mood a little bit get you a little bit comfortable and then take you on a journey in different ways and uh, it, it it was really well done in that sense we see some parts of the penguin come out in the last bit of the film especially when falcone is like taunting him and then like the penguin is just like how dare you and just it was like Oh, that's the penguin. Like, he, he's coming out. And then we get the final sort of shot of him. Like, um, when Batman is saying, like, this is the moment where I need to step up because people are going to take advantage of this moment. And then we get this shot of Penguin, like, zooming into his face and he just smirks. And it's like, oh, like, it's perfect. And I cannot wait to see what journey we have with him in the future. Jeffrey Wright as Jim Gordon was 
the perfect choice. I said this in the teaser when it came out. I was like, literally like, perfect. He's such an incredible actor. And in this film, I love Jim Gordon's partnership <laughs> with Batman. I just remembered the thumb drive joke. And just, I remember, like, everybody in the cinema just going, ugh, and just Batman. I feel like even in just the sense of us, like, breaking the fourth wall sort of thing, Batman was the only one who was, like, calmly just holding the mayor's thumb in his head. <laughs> but, <laughs> going back to Jim Gordon, I love the energy that Jeffrey brought to Jim Gordon. He's, because Jim Gordon, he's not old, but he, he has so much energy and life to him. He's trying to uncover corruption, but also he's a little naive to the corruption that takes place within his own sort of like cohort with his friend. I think it was, he was the commissioner, the friend be ending up being like very cr corrupt and helping out with Falcone and being involved in that. Um, and then, yeah, a lot of the cops actually helping Falcone um, and being a part of his like little business of drug dealing and stuff. It was very interesting to see that. And I love that deep dive for, for Jim because Jim realizes that not, he can't trust everyone in his cohort, but there is a large amount of men who also believe in the same thing he does, which is justice for Gotham and to make Gotham a safe place. Yeah, you can see that friendship and like partnership building in this film a lot. And um, yeah, I, I, I really hope that they bring him back for the sequel as well. I'm hoping they bring majority of these characters back for the sequel because they were all well done. Now, <laughs> Paul Dano as the Riddler. Um, sir. You were fantastic <laughs> and terrifying. Again, like I said at the beginning, this is not your average Riddler. This is not the Riddler that we've seen in the comics. This is not Jim Carrey. This is very Zodiac killer style um, Riddler, serial killer. It's not like the usual Riddler that we're sort of familiar to. Um, even for me. And I actually really like the, the sort of like turn they took with this character because it reminded me a lot of 2019 Joker um, and how this Riddler who it, it turns out to be a blogger <laughs> and vlogger I love it um, it just he he um, gave hope to people who were also the forgotten ones in Gotham who the the ones who um uh, are the outcasts. And this is what happened with the Joker. Joker did the exact same thing, but in a very different way. Um, and the Riddler, he, he is a beacon of hope for these people. He, um, he stands for something which is standing up to the corruption and the messed up, tangled web um, of sort of like the socialites that are in Gotham. And so it was really interesting to sort of delve into that, especially when it turns out that he's just this normal lanky kid who's just like like and especially in the in the jail scene um even though he was i was so scared even though he was so the the fact that he was so normal was so terrifying um and especially because he got batman to do a lot of the heavy lifting for him um even though batman's like no like we're not partners or anything and he's like yes yes you did all the heavy lifting for me you brought the rat into the light and then obviously he sniped um, Falcone, and then he was saying, like, you know, buddy, buddy, best friends, like, dynamic duo, and then Batman's just like, no, no, like, we're not, and then breaks the Riddler's heart, and I love when he's just screaming, because, and he's just yelling, and it makes you uncomfortable, because you realize, like, this was his plan, he just was killing all these people so that he could have a partnership with Batman, and he was just treating it like like a normal thing and Paul just did such an incredible job making sure that I think the normality is what scares us because like you think it's going to be this guy who has this massive plan but in reality it's because of the corruption that like affected his childhood being an orphan and being abandoned by in in a way being abandoned by the Wayne sort of renewal act that um Thomas Wayne had going before he he died and he feels abandoned by that and he blames a lot of people, the police, he bl blames like politicians, he blames Thomas Wayne and obviously went after Bruce Wayne. Terrifying, especially in that opening scene, just like his eyes, like, a, like I act there was a lot of eye acting in this film and he did a great job with it and the heavy breathing, just like, the b uh! <laughs> 
It was so good, but so terrifying, and I loved it. Just, it's so good. Like, it, ah, oh, it made me so happy just being terrified by a Batman movie. It's been a long time since that happened. Now, the beautiful Zoe Kravitz as Selena Kyle. As I said, guys, she went on an emotional journey in this film. Um, obviously, she had a girlfriend. She was bisexual. Hell yeah. Um, I always honestly believed that Selena was bisexual. So for it to be confirmed, I was like, mm, yes, like, I love that. Um, just because I feel like all men and women are, like, like attracted to Selena Kyle. Um, and also Zoe Kravitz. Because have you seen Rob and Zoe's, like, all their photo shoots? Like, how cruel can you be to be this gorgeous? Like, oh, anyway. Enough of that. That's just me getting a little bit flustered. But, <laughs> but again... Um, I love her compassionate side, how much it was shown in this movie, um, how much she fought to find Annika um, and fight the corruption as well that is within the city. Um, because she is also, like Batman, she stands up for the vulnerable and those who cannot protect themselves. And I love sort of like that dynamic between the two. They both are working to... Um, uproot the corruption and support those who can't protect themselves as well as they can. Now a lot of people have been talking about the romance between Selina Kyle and Batman um, but I wanted to talk about it and sort of like unravel it a little bit because for me I've always seen their relationship as they both desire each other and they both are very intrigued by one another um, because I know a lot of people were like there wasn't much of like a sizzling like fire romance between them and I'm like because it's not like that it's because they're very curious about one another and especially in this film um because yeah I'll go into the ending a little bit later but like um Bruce is very socially awkward even as Batman so he he just doesn't know how to react to those things but in the film we can see how much he is curious by her and how intrigued he is by her and her sort of like femininity and her personality and he's drawn to her um and, and the same with selena and i think selena has a little bit more attraction to him in terms of like whether it's sexual or loving whether whatever it is um she has a little bit more attraction i think than he does at the moment um and especially with the ending of the film being left so open on their relationship her leaving gotham i feel like she may come back uh, maybe in the third film or maybe in like if they do more films I'll be really happy about that but if she comes back I would really love that and maybe Bruce is more you know he's like changed a little bit he understands his emotions now he accepts it as it comes and then maybe they might get another sizzling romance or a chance at it because we have seen this in Hush um they do have a romance in that particular comic and even in the animated movie um but they do there are comic books where they do end up romantically involved as Bruce Wayne and Selina Kyle um I guess maybe it just needs more time for Bruce to sort of grow into not only his personality as Bruce Wayne, but even as Batman. Um, because he's not that confident, like, playboy. And even it's not just that. He's not there as Bruce Wayne. He's a shell of what he is. Zoe was an incredible addition to the cast. She really stood out in her story, especially the story about Falcone being her father. Um, I did think that that was going to happen, especially with the storylines that they were going with, and I really enjoyed that. It really was great to sort of delve into her mindset about Falcone. Even her, like, hunger for vengeance and revenge from her father and everything he's done is so well done, so, so well written and paced. And especially because, oh, we see the coldness that sometimes is Catwoman. We see that just a little bit in this film towards the end. And I love that. And she, you know, she tried to kill Falcone. She, and she was really cold in it. But I just love, I love the relationship that her and Bruce had. Because not only did she really change his, Bruce's um, view of the black and white, like bad, good and evil um, sort of thing, but... It's a companionship between the two. I've always seen it as that um, in certain sort of like adaptions of the films or even their relationship. So I really like the way that they, that Matt and Peter um, really delved into the relationship of them. And it seems like, again, like there's a, there's a chemistry between them that like you can't deny it. And this is what I've always seen with Bruce Wayne and Selena. They're always sort of drawn back to one another. Um, so I, I love that. And I hope 
that we get to see them again soon because that would be really nice. Hello, Shimey coming from the editing room because I realised that in my Selena Kyle section that I was being a total fangirl that I forgot to bring this up. Um, I absolutely love the fact that our beautiful Selena Kyle brings up the corruption and favoritism without the city. Now, a lot of people are calling this woke behavior because the internet is the internet, but it is not woke behavior because literally we are seeing this throughout the entire film. White old men, privileged white men, um, rich men who are doing absolutely nothing to help the city and is literally their mistakes are being swept under the rug and just not being um a- attended to as like a lot of criminals are and um it's an interesting topic especially because it is so true um and even in a way it is true to to Bruce Wayne too because in a way Bruce doesn't understand the privilege that he has or what he can do with it and it is something that I think we'll see in future versions of this particular Bruce um we'll see like more of him becoming Bruce Wayne like I said like I do say later on in the review um and he will learn how to use his like privilege and his wealth to help those who are not as um privileged as he is um and help the people who need it the most now we're gonna talk about the man himself Robert Pattinson as Batman. Now, what did I tell you guys? I told you guys to give him a chance, and I knew he was going to stand out as the Batman and as Bruce Wayne. Um, he was fantastic in this role and completely disappeared. Um, I also agree with what a lot of people are saying, is because we were so involved with him as Batman that you, like, whenever he even came out looking like Bruce Wayne or, like, you know, Robert Pattinson, it was like, this is Batman. This is Bruce Wayne. Like, this is, like, this is him. Starting off, we're going to talk about him as the Batman. Now, I love, and it's sort of going to delve back and forth between him and Bruce Wayne, but um, I love, like, the coldness that Batman had a lot in this film. And just, it just shows, like, how emotionally not there he is. Um, and that leads into a lot of revelations later with Bruce Wayne, which we will talk about in a second. Um, but I love the crime-solving detective, ba- like, Batman that we got in this film. Because we don't get that a lot. In the animations, we do get that a lot. That's everything that we see all the time. But with this, like, live action, like, properly crime-solving, going with Jim Gordon, or like meeting with Jim Gordon on the tower and then going off and doing it together and investigating different sites was so good. And even with just the way that um, Batman was handing out vengeance, um, it's a journey that obviously it takes him through the whole film and it climaxes at the very end, especially when it's the flooding um, and he's up in the ramparts trying to stop the Riddler's goons and, you know, he takes the adrenaline and he looks like a beast and he bashes this guy's face in um and then the first thing that guy says when the mask comes off is i'm vengeance and i think that was the moment where it clicked for batman that he was like oh i'm i'm going about this the wrong way like i'm giving sort of inspiration to some of the wrong people um and i think that really affected him in that moment Again, I said this at the beginning of the film, Batman is an obsession to Bruce Wayne in this film. He's not Bruce Wayne that we're familiar with, and I I can see a lot of people criticising the film for that, but people need to understand that in this moment in time, he is not the playboy billionaire that we are familiar with. He's not Christian Bale, he's not Michael Keaton um, and other Batmans, um, or even Ben Affleck's um, Batman. He is... In the early days, he doesn't know how to act as Bruce Wayne. And it is through Batman that he's able to discover how he's still struggling with his grief for his parents. And may even struggle from the same grief that his mother does. Because, um, or the same mental conditions that his mother does. Because, obviously, the, the big secret was Martha having mental health issues, being at Arkham Asylum, and then his father. And this is the thing that Alfred does. He he explains it to Bruce that I think shows a different perspective. And that really opens the floodgates on realising that he hasn't gotten over his parents' grief. But Alfred says, your father did it to protect your mother. It's because he loves your mother. He didn't care about being the mayor. And that was something in the comics as well that has always been said. Thomas Wayne had an, a, a large amount of love for his wife. Um, It just showed, like, Alfred is trying to explain 
how much love he like Thomas Wayne had for his family and what he was willing to do to try and protect him but also how he did not stand for corruption yes he went he went to the wrong people um and Falcone said leave it with me and Thomas Wayne like and this is just so beautiful like he he didn't want any death and he didn't want anything bad to happen to the journalists that found out stuff about Martha. Instead, Falcone went and killed her. Oh, him, sorry, the journalist. And um, he ended up getting in, like, it, it ended up messing things up for the Waynes. Um, and it dragged them into the world of corruption, unfortunately, and gave Bruce the wrong idea. And the hurt Bruce felt like Rob's acting in those scenes where he, 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 he sees the truth on TV and he's watching, like, he takes the cowl off and he's just in horror that he didn't know anything about this and then going to Alfred and poor Alfred, he literally wakes up from a cover the first thing Bruce says is, you lied to me. Like, oh, give the man a break, Bruce. Um, but it's in that this hospital scene, you can see how painful it is for Bruce to sort of like talk about his parents and, and even Alfred says like I know that you blame yourself for your parents death and this this whole thing this Batman thing is doing it not only for their legacy but you know trying to stop anybody else from going through the same pain that he went through in losing his parents and Bruce even admits it he says like I'm struggling still and I thought, like, by, like, you know, like, I, I thought I got rid of all that emotion. Um, I thought, like, cutting that all off would help. But instead, it causes him so much more pain. And it broke my heart. Because, and this is the thing, we don't see a lot of that in the Batman films. Like, we did see a little bit in the Christian Bale stuff. Um, we don't get to see it too... Well, I mean, we did see a little bit in Ben Affleck's. Um, I just don't think it was as well executed as, for example, this, in the Ben Affleck sense. Um, but in this one, like, the heartstrings were tugged, dude. And it me it meant so much to me that we were getting these scenes because it was peeling back layers of Bruce that we haven't really seen before or we don't talk about often. Like, we just say, oh, he's Batman. Okay, he's a hero. La la la. Next villain, we're gonna go kill him. But then with this, it's just showing the real reason. Like, it all, it's coming back to the reason why he's Batman, why he's doing this. Um, and it, uh, to the core of it, he's just grieving for his parents still in a very toxic way. <laughs> but it's still, like, him struggling. And it's so sad it's heartbreaking and I just I was just like really happy that they touched upon that in this film and just thank you Matt and Peter for putting this in the film because that scene was beautiful and yeah and then Bruce finally like opening up and saying like Alfred means so much to him he is like a father figure to him and just you know I think in that moment sort of opening up a little bit in terms of like letting in emotion and letting people in because I think in this moment as well for Bruce he realizes that he's cutting off so much human emotion um because he doesn't want to form attachments with people so he doesn't go through losing people and that's heartbreaking um especially with the future of Batman and like what else happens with like for example the Robins and even with Alfred and other superheroes that get involved with Batman or even love interests and it's just heartbreaking but also beautifully written in this sense um and but also sort of like um foreshadowing like him opening up to people and letting people into his life which is beautiful now the moment another moment that made me cry the moment that batman becomes a hero um or turns from vengeance to justice that scene oh like and it, it shows, like, it's almost like, yeah, again, a very religious symbolism. And he, yeah, he falls into the water and rises as a hero. Um, and, oh, like, rises and realizes what he needs to be. Um, especially with the way he journals in this part. The narration and, the, oh, the music, everything fit so beautifully like a jigsaw in this scene. It was just so well done. Cinematography, music, writing was so well done. Um, but the scene, yeah, he rises up and, you know, leads people out of this flooding area and he becomes that beacon of hope for Gotham. And then he's talking about, like, maybe vengeance isn't the way. I, I need to be something more. And just, oh, like, that, just that realization, like, because you can see in that moment 
even in the body language and everything, he realizes that vengeance isn't enough. He needs to be something more for the people. And oh, the scene like when he's putting the little girl down and he's she's clinging to him. And I like literally, we have seen Batman be cold and just rude and stuff. But the the way he like grips her hand and only when she's comfortable, he slowly lets her go. Um, and just oh. Like, it, I, I'm getting tears from it again, but just, like, it was such a beautiful scene. And just him with the jet... Like, it also shows just the gentle side of Batman. And also how protective he is of kids. Um, It's just such so beautiful. And just so... The acting in the scene was just so well done. No words at all said. And yet just so much evocative emotion from just the body language it's just so well done and then him sort of wait like holding her hand until she was risen up into the sky by the helicopter and his hand is still raised looking at her and just like that scene was just so it it, it honestly has been stuck in my head for like the last couple of days and just it's a beautiful moment one thing i will say i love the detail of him Getting a bit more violent whenever there is a gun involved. I didn't notice this until I watched it on my second watch. But um, the way he gets a l- ten times more violent when there's a gun. So, like, especially when at the beginning in the train station with the goons. We did see this in the trailer. But he electrocutes the guy. And he's just full rage. And then he stops them. And then in the ramparts when Selina is threatened with a gun. He just becomes this monster and that's what batman is he can be very scary loved like all those moments those little character moments that are just they're not all always there but they stand out and just guys like honestly i can go on this film for another like hour or even more because even with me like i I talked my dad's ear off when i came out of the cinema because he was just like how's the film and then i just went blah 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 and just <laughs> talked because it's just like it, it made me sit and think and just think of the themes that went through this film and honestly it's my favorite comic book film in a very long time and I know a lot of people are going to be like oh yeah but what about No Way Home and other stuff like people don't understand how much Batman means to me um and how much of a like how much love and respect i have for him as a character um i honestly love him with all my whole heart um he's a human being with a big heart who's struggling to grieve and grieves in the strangest way possible by dressing up as a bat but he does it to protect people and to not let um what happened to him happened to anybody else, especially children. He is a protector of the people. He is the Dark Knight. And just in this film, it was such an incredible introduction for his character. And just, like, oh, so good. And like, oh, it was just so well done. Like, Matt Reeves and just everybody who was in this production. So well done. And I honestly hope that you guys get all the rewards you deserve because... Again, this movie was just fantastic, and I, I have very few faults with it. Like it, like I honestly like, I was breathless when the film ended because I was just like, holy shit! And I sat through all the credits because I just listened to the soundtrack because it was beautiful. But just, like, uh, yeah, this film was absolutely stunning and just amazing in every way. So, <laughs> yeah, honestly, this film has to be like a nine point five out of ten for me because. Again, I, f- I had very few flaws. It was just some of the pacing, some moments could have been taken out. Other than that, honestly, I absolutely loved this film. And it it honestly, like, it's been, it's sitting with me a lot. And I've been thinking about it nonstop. It's so good. And I just, thank you, Matt Reeves. <laughs> you really are a like a, a passionate fan about Batman. But also the whole entire production just seemed... I haven't seen a production this passionate, I think, besides Zack Snyder, like, and his passion for the whole Justice League, but in terms of Batman, like, Matt Reeves, I think, is it. Like, Dave Filoni for Star Wars, I think Matt Reeves is what we need for Batman, because he, his love and his passion is oozing throughout all of this, this incredible production, but also just the rest of the crew. Like, you can tell in every facet of the film, all the 
like everyone's passion and love has gone into this and it's paid off um like i said this film is not going to be for everybody um it's again it's not going to be for everybody which is totally okay um for me though this is what i wanted this is everything that i wanted and more um and i cannot wait for what else matt reeves gives us in the shows and in future movies for robert pattinson as batman like and yeah robert pattinson has officially become my batman like I, I honestly can't. I, I can't. <laughs> I can't choose anybody else. I think he is. He's it. He's the one. <laughs> so thank you guys so much for watching this. I hope you guys enjoyed this review. Please give a like, subscribe, comment, and tell me your thoughts if you have seen it on The Batman. Because I would love to converse with people about this. I love this film. It was so good. So well done. And so well put together. Um, the characters were amazing. The, the stories we got were so good. And just, yeah. Like... Honestly, like, I, 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 I'm speechless because it's re it really is just such an incredible film. And I honestly just love the hell out of it. I think I'm going to stop it here, guys, because otherwise I can be here for hours and we do not want that. <laughs> but thank you guys so much for watching this video. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Here's your finger out.